Welcome back to part three of working on this 1973 Dodge Camper Special that hasn't been on the road in 25 years, last registered in 1998. We're continuing work on it. In the last episode, we cleaned out the gas tanks. We made a new fuel neck hose for it. We fixed a bunch of wiring and lighting issues. We put an electric choke on it, but it still needs a few more things to really be road ready in my eyes. So let's go over what those things are. You can see I have the cutter out. This is the only spot on the truck that's rusted through. So we're gonna cut this section of floor out. We're gonna make a new floor, weld it in before we put the carpet kit in because I do have a new carpet kit. The old carpet was completely soiled with rat crap, rat turds, rat pee. I mean, it was, it was totally unsavable. So it's gonna get a nice carpet kit. And I felt that the truck deserved that because it's, uh, look at this thing. I mean, it's just so clean. You know what I mean? It's so clean, so straight, paints there, deserves a carpet kit. Um, and after that, we are gonna deal with the paint. So you can see, we've been leaning over it right here, working in the engine, and you can see how nice the paint actually is. We've sanded it off with our jackets, you know, bending over it. Um, but the rest of the paint job is chalky, oxidized, but it's all there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this paint up. We'll maybe sand it with some 1500, we'll polish it out, we'll make it look basically like a brand new truck. Uh, it'll be really nice. So once we do the floor, put the carpet in, put the seat in, make the interior nice and complete, bolt the dash back together, fix the paint, we'll be really coming down the home stretch on this thing. Do you have another Sharpie? This thing's a piece of crap. Probably cut a hair bit off the top, move it up, because none of this fits. So if I take it off here and shove it up a hair, it might fit. Don't make me get in here and do this. Because <laughs> I'll do it. You go ahead for now. <laughs>
put some protective enamel on it, keep it from rusting again. Doesn't really matter what color, because we're going to be putting carpet over it anyway. Which, as long as it's a floor, you know what I mean? Alright, so the floor is welded up and fixed and painted. It looks really good. I'm super happy with it. Um, yeah, but you can see some water right there. I already know what's going on there. Um, the heater core is probably toast, you know, because I just hooked the lines up and put water to it. And you can see it's dripping. Let me see if you can see. See how it's dripping right there? All that water dripping on the ground. And yeah, heater core is toast. So these are never fun or easy because they're way up in the dash. You got to, it's just a pain getting to them. But yeah, we're going to have to address that. So the goal of today is to make this truck look good and what we're going to do is we're going to clean the rims up with some zero aught uh, steel wool. We're going to try and freshen this paint up and probably a controversial opinion but I'm going to take the camper shell off for now. Uh, I think it will look better technically speaking without the camper shell and when I go to probably sell this truck I will include the camper shell and uh, I'll just include a picture of it off to the side or whatever and if somebody wants to buy it with the camper shell we can just put the camper shell back on it it's not a big deal look at how clean the paint in the bed is perfect I want to see it without all this stuff in it um, with all the carpet and the wood out I just think it's gonna look really snazzy you know All right, that's in the middle. Yeah, it's up. What's that? Yeah, it's up. Yeah! All right, let this down. Come down. You can't tell me that doesn't look so much better, so much cleaner, so much nicer. I mean, it looks like a truck. Look at the towing mirrors on it. This looks like a truck that you would be using from day-to-day -day operations. I love it. It looks great. And look at the bed. I'm about to take this out, but uh, the, the inside of the bed looks so good, so clean.
handy things I ever bought was a metal sweeper. A whole bunch of bolts and nuts and screws and nails came out of the bed of that thing because it's gonna get in your tire. You already know it's gonna pop on your tires. Probably out of gas. I put five or six gallons in it. Just driving it around the yard, I think it ran out. You'd have to cash out your 401k and your IRA if you wanted to drive this thing cross country. You'd need those two tanks. All in all though, the bed looks really good. I was kind of hoping for perfection underneath because, I don't know, I thought it might have been covered for a long time, but I can't complain because it's not rotted out in the slightest. And even though it's, it's been used, it hasn't been used a lot because it's still pretty straight. So we'll just give it a good wash down first, get all the bird poop off of it and, you know, just random crud. And then we'll get in a little heavier. I got some tools over here uh, that we're gonna use I'll probably sand it with um, 1500 or 2000 and then polish it. I probably won't use a buffer. I mean, you can use a buffer, but I'll, I got a polisher that's pretty, pretty heavy duty. So we'll, we'll crack that out. This thing's got a lot of real estate. Oh, it's big. Oh yeah. I love the brand. Uh, really make the truck. Get the hubcap form. Nice. Dad likes the rims that are on this truck, which are for a uh, second gen Cummins, you know, like 94 to 97 and a half. And yeah, yeah he, he likes them. But I, I like the old Steelys and Grandpap caps. No. Dad, Dad says it's too old man. <laughs> I like the grandpa look. Nah. That's even too old for me. Make that ring look nice. You're saying that's oh, looking pretty good. It's got a long way to go. It is looking good, but we still got to make this pop. It's still dull and chalky. And for that, we got a couple of tricks up our sleeve. So I got these fine grit sandpapers. So essentially what you're doing is you're scratching the surface of the paint. And the closer that this number is to zero, the rougher it is. So like 80 grit is for like taking paint off of cars. That's like taking stuff down to bare metal. So you go from, you know, 80 grit, you have 400, 800. The closer the number is to infinity, the finer it is, the closer it is to paper. The closer to zero, the rougher it is. So this is uh, 1500 and 2000 grit. So this is like a finishing sandpaper. It's like pretty high grit, pretty fine. And we're going to put that sandpaper on the, it's really a polisher, honestly. Wet it a little bit and see. That's six, that's the heaviest, so one. This definitely feels softer and, and smoother than this section that I didn't do. Let's see what happens if I...
this is, you can, can you see the reflection? So now you can see the reflection and you can't see it here. So this is looking tremendous. Happy with this. All right, so it's the next morning and I finished sanding this hood with 1500 grit and now we'll go ahead and polish it up. Uh, you can see right here I went through down to metal and right here I went through down to metal even with 1500 grit. You got to be, you know, really careful. Uh, the paint isn't perfect so it's not a huge deal but it's just a reminder to be careful because the natural tendency of paint when it's being laid. The natural tendency of paint when it's being laid is to stick to the flat surfaces and it naturally runs off of all curved edges. Whenever you're sanding, polishing, buffing, you stay away from the edges and you hone in on the flat surfaces and you very lightly hit the the curves and the edges because you'll go right through them even, even with really fine paper. And you just go slow, back and forth motion. You want to go slow because you're, you know, you're really heating the paint up and you're moving it. When it gets warm and the pad's vibrating over it, you're, you're sort of reheating the paint and you're kind of moving it. And you're taking the scratches of the 1500 out. You go up and down. All right, let's wipe it off and see what we've got here. All right, you see a difference there between this and the rest of the hood? I like that. So that's what we're looking to get the rest of this to look like. So we'll just keep it moving.
late yesterday evening, I finished polishing it all up and boy, it looks like a brand new truck. I mean, legitimately. This truck was very well taken care of. This truck hardly even has a ding in it. I mean, look down the side. What a nice truck. I still have some water streaks that I gotta, I'll wash the truck off when I'm done, you know, but man, it came out good. Look at the toolbox door. I mean, wow. Passenger door, the roof, the hood, the fenders. I mean, it came out great. Came out really good. Now what we're doing is we're chasing down some different issues now. Wiper motor is not working the wipers. The fan blower motor is not coming on. The radio is not playing through the speakers even though the face comes on. So this morning we've been just trying to work through these issues and we're getting power to the blower motor and we're getting power to the wiper motor where it should be. Dad was uh, out here with a test light. He put his test light on the prongs of the wiper motor and we are getting power out to the wiper motor and we are getting power out to the blower motor but they're just, they're not turning, they're just froze up. And we got the blower motor out right now and dad's doing an old school trick. Uh, he drilled a hole in the top of it. Let me see. Let me put a little bit of oil in it. Yeah. And then you put a little dab over top of it and you're good to go. So instead of replacing it, it, it just turns hard. It just turns hard. crazy with it because you don't want to get that stuff down all over the brushes and it, it disintegrates them. See it? See? Good. Turn it upside down so it'll run down in it. Now turn it sideways, yeah, like that. Quit it. There we go. Yeah, you couldn't get an easier fan to put in. Okay. On. Oh yeah, there's low. Okay. Medium. Yeah. High. Huh? High's not working. Could just be dirty. There it goes. There it goes. There you go. Yeah. All right, it's working. You can see it blowing some crap out. Medium, low. Yeah, your speeds are working. Hi. Yeah, it's working. All right, yeah. good deal. Now, Dad's working on the speaker wires because they've been eight and a half in a few places by the mice. That's why the uh, radio's not playing. That'll do it. And I'm going to take this panel off and I'm gonna take the wiper arms off, get the wiper motor off, and see why it's stuck. Let me pull the clip. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There you go.
that one last. Well, there's your wiper motor. It's stuck. They always stick. So, it's never the linkage, it's always the motor. Okay, so I got some speaker and some speaker wire cuz the they ate the cones out of the speakers. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they ate the cones out of the speakers. Yeah, the the rats and the mice, they ate the cones out of the speakers and we also have some breaks in the wire and stuff like that so we got some speaker wire and some speakers and we'll uh hopefully get the radio to work because when when i do turn the key on i can see the radio face come on so i don't know it'll probably work honestly and also we got this going on and it's not really serviceable technically but you can see set this down you can see so here's the housing and then see that seam right there there's like a seam so this plate this comes off and I our problem is in here because the, the motor sits like this and then the rain the rain comes from the top and this is where it gets so you can see there's a rivet there and there's a rivet there and a rivet there so we're gonna drill these rivets off this motor isn't really supposed to be serviceable but we're gonna force it to be serviceable yeah it's either that or two hundred dollars for another because on this property we live like we're in the Great Depression. You know, the whole the rest of the world might be living in 2023, but we're living in the Great Depression. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you got to watch. You got to watch things, and you got to figure out how to make things go farther. Even when you think it can't go no farther, study it over. You make it look. <laughs> Can you make another month on it? Yeah, <laughs> right. Huh, ain't much in there. This is the one that usually freezes. Look, oh, wait a minute. Not so bad. It's not so bad. Here, I'm putting this right here. It's got, well, it's got water in there. Yeah, just get that out of there. Get that thing to turn. Oh, what the heck? There it is. Down there. Hey. Yeah, see all that rust down in there? That's what was stopping that motor from turning. It got on the bottom of this too. So, yeah, it definitely needs cleaning out. Yeah, I know I got a vise and I don't have a workbench. I'm looking for a metal workbench. These brushes got to be pushed back. So that this can... There we go. There. Well, I mean, it's on there. So the wiper motor is back on. It's bolted on. It's plugged in. I got these little nuts and bolts holding the casing back together in case you ever need to take it back apart again. But you shouldn't need to do that for another 30 years until it seizes up again. So let's get the grate back on and we'll put the wiper arms back on.
low speed. That's high speed. Low speed. Off. They should go back to their original positions. Good enough. They work. So it's the next morning and we're gonna do this voltage regulator because when we first started the truck up, it wasn't charging and then the next day we started it and it was charging, the amp meter was reading and now it's back to not charging. So I know that the alternator is doing something but is the voltage regulator, you know? It's probably the voltage regulator if I had to guess. And I have another one, so we're just gonna we'll put the and look at this thing. See how it's all surface rusted and all that? I mean, it just looks suspect. So we're gonna put another one on it and see what happens. One, two, five, four, seven, two. It says, kind of looking for. Oh, see, made in Hong Kong. So this is a replacement. This is not a Chrysler original. This one's probably also made in Hong Kong. Yeah, <laughs> made in China. Hopefully that's an easy fix. Probably not. I had the charger on. Yeah, 12-4, it's not, it's not charging. We're gonna have to look into that issue further. Look at what I found. I wonder if I butt connect that, if it'll start working. So that's butt connected. Let's see if that solved our problem. Well, it's looking like it. Yes, sir. Maybe it was an easy fix. I was wrong. All right, that problem's down. On to the next one. Also, I thought you guys would like to know that I hooked up this fuel efficiency gauge. You guys remember that? It's like a vacuum gauge. See how it's reading at 12 miles to the gallon, apparently. And I also hooked up the tack. So we're rocking and rolling. We got a lot of things working, but we, we still got quite a bit of work to do. Uh, it keeps trying to die out. It does not want to idle. I don't know why. Like if you let it go. All right, well now it's active. It'll, it'll die, I don't know why. But I also have something else that's really cool I want to show you guys about this truck. So here in my hands, I am holding something very delicate and very important that I found while I was cleaning out the truck. And this is the original build sheet, sales sheet, for this truck from 1973. Dated September 15th, 1972, serial number D24BJ, yada yada. D24 BJ and then the rest. This truck was originally sold to Tom Spear out of Hanford, California, Chrysler Motors, Warren, Michigan, dated September 28, 1972. You can see this is a D200 
131 inch wheelbase cab and swept line so it's not a step side it's a swept line ED5 engine 8 cylinder HCH auto 400 so this came with a 400 someone's put a 440 in it somewhere down the line trans A727 auto that's a 3 speed tinted glass sliding rear window which we can see that it does have the sliding rear window it does have air conditioning emissions SST not sure what that means electronic ignition system which yes it does not have points it has electronic ignition California label so that's probably California emissions and I do have the California emissions sticker that went right here I think I have it in the glove box yeah so this right here the California exhaust emission standard for engines this is the original Chrysler California emission sticker that went right here on the windshield because I could see remnants of the print right here so I know it went there uh, alternator 60 amp 70 amp battery auxiliary fuel tank we all know the whole struggle I went with getting those two tanks to work so it does have came with the two fuel tanks uh, dash insulation radio mirror JR with arm I don't know if that means like a set of towing mirrors I don't know if those towing mirrors are factory I, I'm not 100% sure but it had some kind of mirrors um, drip molding which probably means this molding right here you know the drip rail molding is stainless some of them probably did not come with that this one does have that uh, let's see drip molding horn dual so dual horns two horns hubcap um, I don't know hubcap kit tool storage which we've seen has the tool storage on the side mechanical jack which I have not 100% sure I mean I have this I don't know if that's the factory jack but I do have it <laughs> TC underslung I don't know what that means instrument panel black this instrument panel is black two-tone paint four wheels 16 by five and a half spare wheel power steering which it has 70 16 something uh, medium tan and white so this is the original paint tan and white I don't believe this has ever been repainted uh, this is the original paint tan and white so this is all correct uh, bill of lading bill of lading just means uh, this is for the shipper purposes that is very cool to have this paper that matches this truck entirely um, I just that's wild by the time I get trucks they're used and abused and you know ran through hard and put up wet so I will be keeping this and whoever I future sell the truck to will get this paper along with you know some other stuff I have for it we're moving full steam ahead on the 73 Dodge we're getting quite a bit done with it we still have more stuff to do on it definitely not the end of this truck we still have to fix the heater core we have to put the interior back in it carpet seat it's running a little rough if you guys want to support the channel Make sure you like and subscribe and leave some feedback. And if you want to support in a more direct way, we have channel memberships open with extra posts and seeing projects before they hit the main channel and all main channel videos you get 24 hours early. Some cool perks in there you guys might like. But either way, Dad and me really appreciate all your guys' views, your support, your comments, feedback. We just hit 130,000 subscribers. We're very grateful for every single person and every single view. And we will see you guys in the next one.